Hello and welcome back to my driveway. So, I think this is going to be the finale for this trailer build. The We're about 95-98% there, but some of the stuff is just super easy things that don't really affect it being a trailer. So, today we're going to tackle the rest of the decking here. We're going to throw the winch on and then we're gonna have a little final summary roundup and hopefully a uh, price gauge to go with that so let's get this planking down and we'll show you a couple little things that I did after we get most of it set down here let's get to it All right, so lucky for me, I pre-cut all of this. So it should have fit pretty well, which it kind of did. You could tell that uh, middle board was a little on the snug side, but this is pretty much a car trailer. So what we're kind of looking at, kind of give another quick little rundown of what we have. Got all our planks, and you can see these two black channels. I used to have those welded to the frame to protect the airbag lines, but I cut the, all the welds and switched out to bolts. That way I should just be able to remove bolts and I can remove that whole panel and access the airbag system for any maintenance or adjustments. And then up here, we got a few more little hard points. Those there, uh, I was trying to make an earlier, earlier video, but well, smash it all in here. I essentially stole them from another trailer that I had in the back, just so I didn't have to spend any extra. And I welded them up, put a bolt in them for good measure. And then that makes it so we can hopefully throw a winch onto this piece. Let's go take a look at that. Alright, so we got our mounting plate. Mount it something up like that maybe. Alright, so I did finish getting this uh, mounted up to the plate and put in the holes that were drilled. Kind of did that under the cover of darkness and so that wouldn't make a very good video. But that pretty much wraps up this build basically in its entirety. Um, there are still a couple little things here and there that I'm going to have to do, but some of them have to wait for warmer weather. 
we're expecting some more snow again so that's always a bunch of fun we got these fenders that I still have to put the steel backing on and I still want to put stake pockets on here and probably a couple jacks in the rear so I'm able to load vehicles without a front vehicle on there so that'll be something to do in the warmer weather but all in all this is pretty much it so like I was saying before, we're just going to run down, get a quick summary of what we built here, and then go through some prices, and we can see if this was really even worth it, or if I just wasted a bunch of money. So, let's have at it. Alright, now let's get down to the real concept that we got going on here. We started off with a set of 7,000 pound 4 inch drop axles. This allows a much lower deck height and allows me to do what I decided I wanted to do with this thing from the start. The frame itself is 6 inch C channel. So the whole length of 20 some feet, both sides, 6 inch channel. The tongue, a little bit down there, is a fully wrapped tongue. And essentially fully wrapped tongue is what they consider it when you have your tongue steel come all the way out to right in front of the axles and then it comes in and pivots in towards the front so essentially anything axle forward no way in blue blazes are you going to ever bend that steel now behind that we still have the whole six inch c channel and if you look that up online you can see just how rigid that is so we don't have to really worry about bending and all that type of stuff. So, the rest of the deck, I use three inch C-channel at basically two foot on center. All right, a little bit of fact checking shows that there are actually 16 on center that I went with. Kind of got a little confused since I was researching what a similar style trailer is made with, so. We got 16 on center, three inch C-channel, full length of the uh, trailer. Um, they're a little wider, closer to the 24, a little bit over the axle, just so we had proper alignment for the airbags. So let's get to do the real operation, and that's going to be the uh, suspension. Now what I did was I built it with a trailing arm style. We'll cut to a little bit of that. All right, so down here, we can show you exactly how the radius arm works. It's got a bracket there, a couple bolts into bushings. And that keeps everything from rotating We've got the air ride baskets and our air spring back here. And of course, panner bar right there. So that's the basic setup of this radius arm style suspension. Now, one other thing of note is when you're running these airbags, you can kind of get yourself into a bad situation or a good situation depending on how you wire up the hose plumb it up basically if you tie the front and the back together it will kind of work as an equalizer so as say this axle goes up it's going to create a spike in air pressure which will then feed into the rear one and slightly raise that as well so it helps absorb single axle issues so if you run like a dual torsion uh, each axle has to take the brunt of the impacts where 
the leaf spring with an equalizer or the way I have this thing set up helps to fix that problem. But at the same time, you can't have it attaching to the other side. So kind of like the same thing, if you end up going side to side, you could hypothetically push down on one side and it'll cause the other side to raise up. So it creates kind of a neutral thing, which is what you want front to back, but not side to side. So what I ended up doing was putting a check valve on each side. So that way we don't have any of that side to side thing. And it should work quite well. And then the airbags that we used on this are actually ones designed for some sort of Kenworth. So they are rated to 20,000 pounds a pair, I believe. So I've got no fear of this ever having a problem. So our next spot, we got the deck, we got suspension. It's probably these fenders. they are fully removable so that way we've got better loading capabilities weird vehicles can be loaded up the Raider itself uh, if we get something really wide they can kind of walk over tires if so need be it's also gonna benefit quite well for making adjustments on the brakes and all around that's gonna work very well. Another positive benefit, you can fit a uh, fork right in the center of the uh, tire. So you can load pallets and stuff with a forklift. Not gonna cause much problem at all. For the most part, that's everything back here. We do have LED lights set up on all the corners. And we've got special items up front to make that help. All right, so up front, we've got our couplers that pretty much is on one of those C-channel uh, adjustable height. So we can dial in whatever height we need for whatever vehicle we're running on. Right now we have it set to the highest height, which is what we need to run for towing on the Raider. Since the Raider has like a 12 to 14 inch lift, all things considered. Back here, we got our box with a solar panel. All right, so in the box, we have full-size battery. We've got the air compressor and a whole series of valves and regulators to make the whole trailer actually work the way it's supposed to. So we also have air hose that we can use to air up tires and so on and so forth. Then of course, the most recently added 13,000 pound winch, which who knows if it's actually 13,000 pound rated or not, since it is one of those Chinese operations. Either way, it's pretty hefty and it should work quite well. Finish off everything up front, we do have the safety chains and we have the breakaway switch operator there and that is pretty much the whole thing of course i did rig up on that breakaway switch to enable hazard lights without a connected vehicle which should come in handy on rare occasions but it's kind of nice just having that option now this is where we're going to get in the fun part how much does this thing cost all right, I got the grand totals going on right here.
let's start off with the ex most expensive parts. That's going to be the axles. So the axles, tires, wheels, I kind of lumped them all together. That was $2,120. So that's all the rolling pieces. There's that. We've got next expensive, the frame. So that's going to be all the steel, safety chains, coupler, jacks, anything that is steel that makes up the hardcore part of the trailer. That's 1712. So 1712. Next expansion stuff, basically going to be the suspension. So the airbags, they're 200 bucks a pair, and then the link pieces and bushings and that type of stuff. That came to 656. All right, local church likes to ring their bells and I got limited time to get things accomplished here today. But anyways, next, the air related things. That's gonna be couplers, wire, hose, gonna be the air compressor, the tank, the dump valves, all of those fittings and such that was 458 bucks now we're just down to kind of the in-between little pieces here and there we got the winch and the winch plate and all the hardware with that that's 407 bucks all the electrical stuff that's going to be tie down for the battery solar panel wires all that type of stuff that is 354 Then we got the aluminum ramps, 328. Lights, 203. And the fenders, 189. And then of course, we can't forget the wood, which was about 350. All in all, not too bad. Grand total, 7,082. And 45 cents if you really care about that. But. How does that stack up with trailers you can pick up? Well, there are pre-built ones between six to 7,000. That's factory direct. You still have to figure out how to get it from the factory to where you are. And those are gonna be for your stripped down model, uh, leaf springs, no box, no winch, no fun, fancy stuff. And yeah, so if we, hypothetically made this into leaf spraying and didn't have all the fun ritzy stuff we could have knocked off about 1180 bucks so for comparison's sake something you can pick up for 7000 we built for about 59 eh. but essentially what i was going for is i wanted a trailer that was as decent as what you can pick up a stripped down model and pretty much have the works. And there's not too many other trailers that have this level of ride height change for loading, unloading, things like the crossfire and other low riding equipment, removal fenders, in and out of doors, larger vehicles, weird stuff. We pretty much got the works going on here and I think we did halfway decent for pricing. Now, if you were just in for it, just wanting a trailer, I would really suggest you go out and buy one. Because this really isn't for everyone, and you're not really saving anything when you think about how much time was actually spent on this thing. Throw that in there. This thing's out of league with anything else. But since I was able to dominate my own time, hey, reap a little bit of the benefits. So, that's kind of going to close this up a little bit here. Um, basically, 7000 7100 bucks. Got a unique, one-of-a-kind trailer that rides really nice. Anyways, this is probably going to do it for quite a while. We still have a lot of snow that is making a lot of muck, a lot of mud, and there is no way I'm going to be able to get the crossfire out through this mud 
to get anything accomplished in the back. So unfortunately, it's probably gonna be signing off for approximately a month. Um, I've got more stuff to do on the house that I can kind of do in the meantime. And we'll get back to this as soon as we can. So hopefully you stay subscribed and keep a lookout on these new videos. We've got a lot of things coming up with the Ford pickup truck. Get that uh, 4.6 uh, from that Explorer thrown in there. Gets a, a prototype racer going type of thing. Fire suppression for the crossfire. A bunch of stuff like that, but that's pretty much going to do it today. Anyways, thanks for stopping by and watching. Hopefully we'll get to see you again later.